Hello beautifuls, this is Avrami here and welcome back to Seduce Me to the Demon War. So, I believe we stopped where uh, Diana questioned why the angels were after me and I honestly don't know why they're after me. So, someone answer me that? I don't know what you were talking about. Say what you will, but I can recognize fear and thrallment anywhere. Thank your father for that. I looked at James, seeing him glare hard at Diana while Diana simply glared black, glared back, not black. When my eyes tried to settle, I could see a form of jealousy burn in his gaze at my fiance. What was happening? James? Yes, love? <laughs> Diana turned on her heel towards Seto, now furious for some reason. Seto, seeing his mistress turn, quickly turned as well and opened the door for her. Sleep. We have work to do tomorrow. Diana left and settled right behind her, closing her door. James and Bryce finally relaxed around me and pulled me close. What was that about? I don't know. Truly or okay? Oh no, we're gonna question this guy, man. James nodded as I turned in his arms to fully observe him. James' face seemed very genuine. Still, something was off and I knew it. It had happened when James arrived and apparently only occurred when Diana was around. It was some sort of power struggle between Diana and James, and he was winning, at least from what I could tell. I shook my head. If James didn't know what was happening, then maybe it was just my imagination. James, however, stared at me with pure concern written all over his expression. But was Diana right? Are angels after you? I don't know. I just had a dream that was full of light and feathers, and... A look of fear ran across Jane's face for a moment before he shook his head and returned his calculated but worried expression. Was Diana correct? Was it an angel attack and not some just random dream? My memories recall when I was captured, the voices that appeared in my room before the imps came sounded so similar to the ones in my dream. Had they been angels as well? This was crazy. What was going on? First I'm cursed, then I'm hunted? This was unbelievable in every sense of the word. Nothing made sense and this entire situation was confusing. What would angels want with me? James shook his head and kissed her forehead. Well, they're gone now. Let's get some more sleep. Okay. I nodded, wrapping my arms around James and lying back with him. He slowly began to pet my hair, most likely wanting me to sleep first before he did. Slowly, I closed my eyes and let the darkness of sleep take over me once again. This time, there was no rocky dreams. I simply floated in the darkness until I naturally woke up, still in James' arms. I looked up at James' sleeping face, so peaceful and almost happy. His arms around my form made me feel warm and fuzzy inside, causing me to cuddle closer to his body. Unconsciously, James pulled me closer to him, wrapping his arms tighter around me. I could tell he was awake, however. His breathing wasn't slow like it usually was when he slept. James? No response. He was pretending, which made me giggle a bit. Little things like this took my mind off the world and made me forget about my troubles, whatever they were. I guess... That was the blessing of being in love. I smiled and kissed James' cheek, making his smile grow a bit more. I knew it. I know you're awake. No, you don't. <laughs> I laughed and playfully smacked his upper arm, making him laugh as well, and opened his eyes to look with me, a loving but tired gaze. I became once again lost in his eyes as he smiled at me. Good morning. Did you sleep better? I nodded, knowing that he would happily hear it. I was more than happy to say it before snuggling in, into his arms, nuzzling, nuzzling his chest. What about you? Did you sleep well? James nodded and ran his hand through my hair, petting me lovingly. I did. All I did was dream of you. No. A soft blush fell into my cheeks before I looked up at him, seeing him smile down at me. It's the truth. Would you like to hear? What? I felt myself nod before I even tried to think about the question. James smirked a, l a bit before wrapping his arms fully around me and leaning in to whisper in my ear. I dreamt that we were on a private island, basking in the sand beneath the sun. The wind was perfect, and you looked absolutely stunning in your swimsuit. Oh, this is really cute! This is totally different from the other guys. I began to imagine it myself, causing the blush on my face to intensify. As James tightened his hug around me, my body began... began... I, I thought as it became, began to heat up on its own from the warmth his body gave me. Then you pulled me into a kiss, one that I couldn't help but melt into. Oh you kept God. teasing me until I pinned you down against the sand. And I made you beg for me to kiss you. No, <laughs> This is so cute. 
James repaired kissing, uh, kisses along my neck, making my body shiver at both the image of his dream and the feeling of his lips upon my skin. I let out a silent but shaky sigh, and James nuzzled my head, opening his mouth to say more. This is really cute, because, like, girls would tell... I, I feel like girls talk a whole lot more about themselves to their boyfriends than their boyfriends actually talking about them. But who knows? But I really like seeing another, like person's point of view probably because i'm a girl and i just want to see what guys think <laughs> alas our moment was broken by a loud knock on our door boy quit fucking in there you got food for no little shit oh i don't want to imagine that dude we do have food though maybe <laughs> come in chains and i let out a simultaneously some simultaneous sigh sorry not yeah, so much for enjoying the moment. This was the misfortune of not being alone. I knew that we would eventually have our alone time together, but for now, a blush of embarrassment ran across my cheeks in response to Sam's allegation. James smiled and kissed my forehead before lifting his head and sitting up. Come on in. We just got up. I sat up as well, right? Uh, I sat up as well, right as the door opened to the hallway, revealing James' brothers and their wives with plates of food. Eric and Irene, or. Irene, Irene, me, I don't know, H carried two plates and handed the extras to me and James. Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. Thanks. Insert name. My pleasure. I don't know if it was, maybe it was another girl that I mispronounced that someone told me the correct way and I don't remember. On the plate was food. I recognized bread, cheese, fruit, and some sort of jelly. Oh, jerky, not jelly, sorry. I assumed it was safe and something I could stomach. James placed his plate on his lap before looking to the group. So, training starts today. Finally! I get to kick some ass. <laughs> you kick ass anyway, you dork. Sam blushed and rubbed his neck before stuffing his face with food. Now, wanting to say any more, Matthew laughed and nodded. We know what you mean, dude. We can finally kick that old man's ass! Not to be the skeptical brother here, but is it possible to become stronger than him in just a week? It's been a while since we've had any encounter involving combat, after all. We'll kill him. Everyone looked to Damien, seeing his stern and cold expression. I frowned, knowing why Damien was so angered at the Demon Lord. As a bastard son, Damien had been left for dead and only survived thanks to his brothers. Damien had no more had more reason than most of a, most to hold a grudge against the Demon Lord. James, however, cleared his throat and looked to Eric. We won't be fighting him alone. This rebellion will help us and allow us to focus our energy on defeating him. I've been waiting years to kick his arrogant brute face in. I think we all have a grudge against him, Sam. We got this. I would not be so sure. Everyone turned to see Sarah in the doorway alone, leaning against the archway with his arms crossed. Oh, Sarah, where is... My mistress had a rough night. She's still recovering from it. I grimaced, knowing that the reason she had a rough night was because of me. Seto, however, seemed to be re-energized and somewhat, had somewhat bright eyed. His gaze landed on James and glared hard, causing my fiance to straighten up a bit. None of you know what has happened these past ten years. None of you know of the Demon Lord's true strength. Then would you care to enlighten us? At last, Seto pushed off of the doorway and walked further into the room, closing the door behind him. He looked to each brother, examining each man sit before setting his gaze on James again. The Demon Lord is a madman. You don't need to tell us that. No. He was mad before, but he lost his mind completely when my mistress formed the rebellion against him. He's killed thousands by his own hand alone out of pure rage. Holy crap. Sorry, I had a yawn. Settle's grip on his spear tightened as something resurfaced in his thoughts, reflecting in his glare. Too many times has my lady faced off against him and almost lost her life in exchange. Settle's cold stare rehardened itself on his face as he shook away the thought and looked to Damien, who had a stony expression to match. What makes you think that you, a band of humanized demons, have any chance of destroying him on your own? The brothers seemed to glare in unison at Seto, as did the wise. I, however, saw his point. The boys had been in the human world for over two years. They had missed so much here and had grown accustomed to a human life. 
I had only been here a day and knew that this world was much more ruthless than the human world. Sam stood and marched towards Cerro, Cerro sending almost nose to nose with the guard and giving him a terrifying glare. What makes you think we can't, prick? I have seen with my own eyes what the Demon Lord can do in battle. We had to live with that sack of shit for almost a hundred years as his sons. We know more than you ever will. Sam, that's enough. No, it's not. Sam and Cerro continued to glare daggers into each other's soul, anger burning in their eyes without any sign of retreat. We had to live with the fact that our dad burnt down villages, enslaved people, and stole hundreds of lives day after day, ending his night fucking a woman who was chained to a goddamn bed. What the fuck makes you think that we don't know anything about him? Damien seemed to flinch at Sam's words, but his angered face remained as Cerro and Sam had their stare down. Cerro, however, remained unfazed. Like I said, he has completely lost his mind. If he was a monster before, he is Satan himself now. He does more than slaughter and burn villages. He takes prisoners and paints the ground with their blood while howling into the sky. He leads legions of imp demons who do nothing but make sure their victims suffer in agony before making them beg for death. He now takes pleasure not in a bed, but in the screams of millions. That's scary. In an act of defiance, Cerro strained his back and almost to towered over Sam, gritting his teeth. If anything, the reason he's as mad as he is now is because you all decided to run. So the blame for this war rests on all your shoulders. Okay, so instead of like Sam's point of view that it was our fault, Jane's point of view it's everyone's fault. Instantly, Sam's, Sam's fist met Seto's jaw and forced him back towards the door. Seto slammed into the door and gripped his hand over his mouth, rubbing it in pain. Sam! Sam! Fuck you! Do not blame this fucking war on us! Seto wiped his lips with fresh blood that began dripping from his mouth and glared, as if the punch wasn't as painful as it looked. Arrogant mutt! The call of the human world was too tempting for you to ignore. You have forgotten about duty and responsibility! We left because we were tired of the lives we had. You left the world and everyone in it to become the victim of a madman and a world war! None of you understand what we have even sacrificed to stay alive! No. We don't. And we never will. Well, both sides of the story is sad either way. James finally stood from the bed and placed the hand on Sam's shoulder, forcing him to step back. As Sam rejoined Carrie, who wrapped her arms around him in comfort, James looked to settle. But you cannot blame us for wanting to be free. <laughs> Settle, on the other hand, began to laugh. It was a painful laugh, but one full of anger. You have no right to defend yourself, eldest son. Because of you specifically, my mistress's entire world was destroyed. I stared wide-eyed at Settle. This was about their betrothal. Betrothal? Right? <laughs> but James did what was best for him. He and I didn't care about the consequences of our love, but Settle's painful words made me shake. Settle's eyes began to burn once again in jealousy at James and Raja's words. Because of you, the only people she had in this world, her family was brutally murdered in the most sadistic of ways! The imps painted the walls of the castle nursery in the king and queen's blood, while her unborn baby sister was ripped from the queen's womb and nailed to the wall like a hunting trophy! I felt sick to my stomach just imagining it, despite not wanting, wanting to in the first place. The imagery was too much, but Seto continued without mercy. The sayer had to watch her kingdom burn before her eyes and listen to the screams of her people when she returned from the human world after hunting you all down. It was only after the siege when she saw the fate of her own family. Soto finally straightened up at the sight. He looked powerful and strong, but his eyes burned with anger and rage as he glared at James. For the first time in my life, I saw fear run through James' eyes. Yet you all claim innocence. You all know nothing of innocence! Enough, Soto! Hello there. Everyone shot their heads towards Diana's voice to see her standing in the corner of the room, shrouded by sh shrouded by shadow. However, I can't. I could faintly see tears running down Diana's cheek, despite the terrifying anger on her face towards Cero. You will not speak of the past again, Cero. Understood? Yes, my lady. 
Diana finally stepped away from the corner and stood in front of settling across from James, uncaring towards the rude tears running down her face. And this is where we're going to stop for today. All that seriousness is out of the way, thankfully. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.